Hola, ¿qué hace? Bienvenidos a En Órbita, una nueva entrevista aquí en Cartagena, a donde me traen a sudar a mares con la esperanza de que adelgace un poco, pero ni así. Y estamos en este momento con Sanjeev Sehora, que es uno de los jóvenes talentos que ha traído el British Council a el Festival Joven, o la versión juvenil para estudiantes del Hey Festival, pero pues con el cual vamos a estar hablando un buen rato. Sanjeev, welcome to En Órbita. Gracias. Um, how do you like it in Cartagena? Do you like it? Or? It's wonderful. It's, um, it's my first time in Cartagena, my first time in Colombia, my first time in South America, and um, I'm loving it. Have you traveled a lot due to your work as a writer? Um, yeah, a fair bit. I think over the last year especially, there's been several trips um, to one to Cape Town, to Bangkok, to India, and now to Colombia as well. And, and within the Colombia, we've traveled about quite a bit. Mm. How is it uh, success as a young writer? Is, is it hard to take? Is it a lot of pressure? Oh, I think success is far too strong a word. I think life as a writer in England is just, um, it's just, it's, you know, it's precarious. It's hard to make, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm very fortunate that I'm writing full time, but I'm very aware that I am quite fortunate to, to do that. Uh, how is the life uh, of a writer? I don't think my life has, changed that much since I've um, um, since I've been writing I still do I still hang around with the same people I still do the same things the only thing that has changed is my job I used to work um, in an office I now work at home at my at my desk but it's still I still try to do it nine till five <laughs> um, every day okay um, another uh, thing that interests me in this line of thought is the measure of success because uh, what I'm talking about is uh, awards and uh, positive, very positive reviews and uh, traveling because of what you do and, and then Wikipedia and all kinds of <laughs> strange stuff. People that know that you read your first novel at the age of 18 which was Midnight's Children from Salman Rushdie. It, isn't it strange? What, success or measuring success or awards? And What's the like? measure of success? No, that's, that's true. It's, I mean, being on lists and um, prizes and traveling, it's all, you know, it's all wonderful and it's, it's, it's wonderful, I'm sure, for, for my confidence. Um, but also in, you know, all that really matters is the writing and what's on the page. So in, in that sense, it's, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's all, um, I just see it all as, as, as confidence boosting. Um, but it doesn't help with the writing in any way. It doesn't mean I'm, it doesn't make me a better writer. It doesn't make me write better. It doesn't make language come any easier. It doesn't make my characters any richer. That that it, none of that changes as a result of anything extra literary that's happening. So um, in one sense, it's it's wonderful for confidence, but it doesn't help with the writing in any way, which is which is normal. So let's talk instead about your process. Uh, how do you begin to write? I begin, well, it's been different with both books. I've written, well, I've had one book published and I've nearly finished writing a second book. And with the first book, Ours Are the Streets, it was um, a very organic process. So, because it is, um, that book's, it's a character study. It's one young man and his, um, his monologue um, to a certain extent. Um, so I just started writing in his voice and then I got, it was very much stop start. So I got so far along, I realized the story was wrong, I'd start again, get, so, get a bit further, realize I'd gone wrong again, stop, start again. And it, was, it took um, about three years before I got to the end of the first draft, so it felt quite um, a lot as if it was being built, the book was being built up as I was writing, as I was writing along. Um, the second novel, which is called The Year of the Runaways, it's a much bigger novel with a larger cast of characters. It takes place over, um, if, over you know, several, places, it's geographically just taking place over a wider space and um, time-wise as well, it takes place over a larger period of years, so I planned that out from the beginning much more and um, so just to structure it um, a bit more better than I did the first book and just to just that just allows me to just marshal myself and the characters through the story in a slightly more stately fashion. Um, Our Side of the Streets, your first novel, mm. is inspired uh, on the bombings that took place on London, July 7th of 2005? 
Yeah, 2005. You were in Leeds, you told me. I was living and working in Leeds at the time, that's right. Which part of this uh, event did inspire you to make this book? Um, you know, it's always hard to talk about where ideas generate from. I suppose, you know, the truest answer is that it's all very abstract and non-textual and it's all just a bit cloudy in the back of your brain and slowly things start to solidify and form. Um, but it is absolutely true to say that I was living in Leeds at the, times of, at the time of the London bombings and um, um, one of the um, perpetrators of those attacks on London um, used to live in Leeds, or he was from Leeds, he lived about a mile away from where I was living, so perhaps, I mean I, I can't be definitive about it, but perhaps that in some way sparked off some thoughts in my own mind about why would a young man who in some respects was very similar to me, he was a child of immigrants, he was um, brought up in the north of England, he wasn't in deeply or profoundly religious in any way, but yet what would make someone go down a path that seemed so um, alien to me. So I think that was an interesting psychology to explore um, in the novel. It does the fact that you were living in the birthplace of one of the perpetrators um, made you think of a character study instead of a historical or chronicle based novel? Um, I don't know. I think it didn't start off, I think, as being such um, a character study or, or as so imprisoned the book as, as imprisoned in his mind. I started off writing it um, in the third person with a slightly larger cast of characters and having, having it a bit wider. Um, um, but I, I wasn't able to really get under his skin. The voice just wasn't really lifting from the page in any interesting way. So slowly and slowly, I think I just found myself going further and further inside his head until I was just writing from all, the novels presented as his, his written account, it's like he's writing his diary. So that's where I think I felt most able to um, articulate what his, what his thoughts and feelings were. Okay, uh, is the protagonist of your second novel yet to come um, an immigrant as well? Um, there's many protagonists, there's four main protagonists in the second novel. Um, some of them are immigrants, um, some illegal, some, some legal though um, by dubious means and, um, and some not illegal immigrants at all so it's, it's, it's a book that takes this group of people who are in this world of immigrants and, and, and the hardships and challenges they face and just tries to um, look at their trials and tribulations as, as is um, of their lives in England. What is what do you find especially interesting about the fact uh, uh, or the nature of the immigrants in England? Because England, and I ask you because England is a, a country of immigrants and, and a country of immigrants above all of them. Yeah, England has it's got a history of um, immigration. I suppose these immigrants um, are living um, or come over here expecting to gain riches and and you know that that the almost like the pavements are you know um, laden with gold, and I think it's a shock to them when they come to England. They realise how hard life is going to be for them, um, and the challenges that they face. And to be honest, I, don't, I think I just write the stories that you know when I'm walking around my patch of the world, you know, in Sheffield in the north of England, you know, the, the people and the stories that I see, and those are the stories that at the moment um, kind of push me to, to my desk and push me to my keyboard and start writing. So walking around Sheffield, I think it's, you, know, you, you do sort of hear of these lives and you see these young men working on building sites or working in fast food restaurants and you do sort and it just pushed me to think about, okay, what, what is going on there? What makes them come over here? And what happens to them when they're over here, when they are so far away from home? What, what does that do to someone's, someone's inner life? Okay, but uh, all this immigration situation comes from the fact that uh, Britain was once an empire and now it's getting back all, all the results of, of, of the colonies that, that they built and now they're receiving all, all the previous uh, hosts of, of their colonies. Now 
Uh, do you trust your novels to be a historic, uh, historical document or, or, or are just uh, psychological studies on situations? Um, I think it, I think you know, psychology really does interest me, especially when it comes to, to novels. I think novels can be great in terms of getting inside someone's head, whether they're you know, a suicide bomber or an immigrant or just you know, the woman down the street or you know, it doesn't have to be a political situation, it, you know, anyone. And I think the novel can do that person, that person justice. So I don't see them as you know, historical documents or um, character studies. I suppose I do think psychology is an important part of writing a novel, along with you know, language and a certain sort of patterning and texture. Um, so it's just one, it's just one aspect of, of the novel that I like. Mm. I want to uh, finish this interview by asking you to give me some advice for those uh, beginning writers that want to be or are oh, okay. writing their novels. Um, yeah, I've only written one novel. I'm not in any position to start dispensing advice, but but um, <laughs> I suppose I'd just say, you know, try and write every day, even if it's just you know an hour a day. A lot of you know, wonderful stuff's been written by people just sitting down for you know a short, concentrated period. So be disciplined, uh, read lots, um, be patient, write every day, and uh, and good luck. Do you believe in inspiration? Um, well, I suppose that's, there's initial sort of burst of inspiration that will push me to 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 the desk. Though it will be something that I'll think about for a long time beforehand. But after that, it's it's. I think discipline is probably a greater um, a, uh, a greater thing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Santiago. It's been so great having you here. And thanks a lot for your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's been wonderful. Y bueno, señores, aquí termina esta entrevista. No se les olvide que la pueden ver completa en www.enorbita.tv. Yo estoy con los idiomas un poco mezclados, pero bueno, vamos a seguir a la casa de personajes relevantes de la cultura aquí en órbita. Hasta luego.